Are you seeking a better way to accelerate your sales, to scale your business, to live a life with no limits? Accelerate Sales Podcast features global experts who have cracked the code to recurring revenues with proven sales systems and get you on the fast track to scaling. Now let's accelerate your sales with today's episode. Hello to the Accelerate Sales Solo Podcast, episode number 364. Today's topic is very important, lifting prices. You will learn three key things. One, reasons why you might be holding back from lifting your prices. Two, three ways to set your prices. And three, ways to lift your prices. If it's your first time, welcome. And if you love what you hear, please subscribe. If you're a regular, thanks for your support. Always appreciate those reviews, whether it be in iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're listening. Please check out past shows on your favorite platform. Just search Accelerate Sales and don't forget to check out those interview shows. So back into the show. So first thing is most of us are after profit. Now that profit could be because we want to do things personally, we want to reinvest in the business, whatever the key reason is for you. I saw a great sign the other day. It said, you know, I basically make more money so that my dog can have a better life. And I think that's a little bit of the case here. But profit equals revenue minus costs. You know that. And revenue is really made up of two keys thing. It's the volume times the rate. And the rate is what I define as pricing. And it's basically what you charge. And I always find that it's easier to raise your rate than it is to increase your volume. And I worked at Coca-Cola for 18 years and they were experts in lifting price. In the early days, we used to do it once a year. Uh, Towards the end of my career, we used to do it at least twice a year. And most customers could pass on the price increase. So they'd uh, add the price increase plus some margin and they'd actually make more profit. So I'd go in and say, this is good news for you that we're putting up our prices because you'll be able to do it. And we had a leading brand, so it was easy to do. And I remember one customer in particular said, if all we could do is sell Coca-Cola, we'd have a much more profitable business. But we joked also that the sales director only had one really clear job for the year, and that was to do the price rise. Then after that, everything was a little bit easier. But I know that product, well, Coca-Cola is a product, not a service. And you probably have a service business and think, well, how does that apply to me? Well, I think the key point about this is that, you know, we used to lift prices every year and you should be doing the same. So often when I mentor people, the first thing I do is looking at their pricing structure and they're normally underpriced. It's an easy way to get that revenue up. And the price increase at Coca-Cola was driven by a combination of input costs increasing. So it might be aluminium, it might be uh, resin, it's other things that used to go in the product. A lot of it was sugar, right? So sugar used to go up, so we'd pass it on. And therefore, you know, the other driver was trying to, maximize profit for shareholder value, right? Uh, But as a service business, your input costs are predominantly your labor, right? So, you know, it's typically your time is the largest input, and then you've got your key staff. So the more time and effort you put in to get results, and you're constantly improving your service or your programs, that should be reflected, or you should be rewarded by putting up your prices. And go back and listen to episode 336, It's called Nine Levers to Pull to Lift Your Revenue. And in that, I've got some really good tips on how you can increase your prices. But what I will be doing is going through this in more detail in a moment. But what could be holding you back, right? You know that you know, you could be charging more that you're not. And I'll really run through quickly five key things. And this is all from my experience, my own personal experience, and also mentoring others. And the first one is you don't see yourself as an expert. And as always, I was told, and I tell other people, that you only have to be better than the person you are helping, right? If you're going to get a result that they can't, you don't have to be the best in the world at it. You've only got to get them that solution. The second thing is you say, well, I need more social proof. I just haven't done this for enough people. And, you know, I don't think that's the case. You don't have to get hundreds of examples. It's just a convenient excuse, I think, to avoid putting up your prices. The third thing is you're worried about the competition. But really, do people buy on price alone? You know, there's multiple factors as to why they buy from you. And, you know, your clients are exactly the same. 
right? So how you buy something is exactly how they do. So I wouldn't be too worried about the competition. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. Fourth is I haven't lifted my prices in the past. And there's a great Chinese proverb that says, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Next best time is today. So just start. Don't use that as an excuse not to now. And the fifth one, and I completely understand this, is I might lose some clients. And look, most of us will... Um, what's the right word I'm looking for? Will grandfather pricing to our existing, especially if you've got a membership, etc. But you may also use this to move some clients on, right? The clients that you know you're over investing in, it may be a good chance to move them on. But the other thing is that it may be a good chance to get the value that you're truly giving them back. Okay. So what have I missed? You know, what are the things that have held you back in the past? Just, you know, email me and let me know what they are. Before I continue, I'd like to talk to you about leadjet.io. Ever looked at a LinkedIn profile and had to manually put the information in or get your team? Like even the team, you know, their, their cost is a lot lower than yours, but still it's an opportunity cost of them doing something different. Or ever sent messages and you had to copy and paste it? Well, with Leadjet, you don't have to worry about that anymore. It automatically does it on some of the major sales CRM. So why not check it out for yourself? Just go to paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash Leadjet. So that's L E A D. J E T lead jet. So let's go into now three ways of setting prices. So I look at them as pretty simple, and I'll just do this fairly quickly. Cost plus competitors and return on investment. So cost plus is putting your full cost for providing your service plus a profit margin. And I think the big misunderstanding here is people just simply miss out on costs. So one is your time, that you're not actually charging your time into it. A lot of people say, I make this profit. I'm like, yeah, but you take drawings. They say, no, I'm old. You didn't make that profit. The second is your team's time, right? And different rates for different team members. The third one is a cost of sales and marketing. So your cost of acquiring that customer is often missed. And the last one is some of the exchange rate differences, especially if you're working like for me, most of, I live in Australia, but most of my clients in the US, I've got to factor that in. The next one is competitors. And as mentioned above, price is not the only reason people buy from you, but it is good to have a look what the competitors are doing and just ask new clients who else they spoke to and what pricing did they have and value prop that they had and the last one is return on investment now I know everyone always talks about this sometimes it's hard to achieve I just use a simple rule of 10 right so what I look at is the total value that I'm going to give over the 12 months and then I ask for 10% of it that leaves the client with 90% right so how you calculate that can be a little tricky but if you just did it on gross revenue or whatever the service you're providing it's a great way of pricing and that typically is a lot higher than what your cost plus or competitors are so so far i've covered reasons that you might be holding off on increasing your prices and also three ways to set your price now a couple of simple ways to increase your prices the first and this sounds overly simple because it is is just your next deal increase it right increase it by 25 percent 50 percent and at worst you only lose that one deal or at worst you can discount back but just try it Right, I think you will surprise yourself at how easy it is. The second, if you've got a membership, increase that. And it's a really good reward for your loyal clients because you normally grandfather their pricing, as I said before, but it's a great way to then, uh, as you add more value, to increase your prices. The third is, uh, once again, difficult clients just raise their prices. So, you know, they may leave, which might be what you want, or at worst case scenario, you're actually getting fully rewarded for what you're doing. And the other one, which is a bit sneaky, well, it's not sneaky, that's the wrong way of saying it, but it's it's something we miss is reduce overcommitments, right? So if you've said to someone that's the pricing for this service, often we are giving a lot more service than that. So one way is to actually go back to your original, original commitments because we can get a bit of scope creep. So three key actions from today. One is raise your prices, right? So that's the first thing. Number two 
is make it at least annual, right? January is a great time of the year to do it. And the other one is ask me for more advice. I've got a lot more advice that could be specific to your situation. Just ask me. You can get all the links in the show notes at paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash podcast. It's num- episode number 364 on your app you're listening to now. I recommend the Pocket Cast app. Not a sponsor, but I love it. Please follow me on LinkedIn. And if you know someone interested in getting more revenue through lifting their prices, please share this with them. They will love you for it. Please take action to live life with no limits. I'm fired up after today's episode. What about you? But hey, before you go, learning is just one piece of the puzzle. Now it's time to put today's strategy into action. Head over now to today's show page at paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash podcast and share how you'll put it into action. Be sure to head over to your favorite podcast platform and subscribe, rate, and review the show. Tell me what your favorite episode is. And don't wait one minute more to gain access to your pulse check at paulhigginsmentoring.com. This could be the difference between struggling to get more leads and making this next quarter your best one yet.